Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to introduce how to think of integrating in polar coordinates to get area inside of polar curves. So when we integrated area under a curve between the curve and the axis, some function of x, remember that we started with an idea of Riemann sums. We used rectangles and the idea was that the formula for the area of a rectangle was the width times the height. And this really ended up being the function for the height and then some width of the rectangle we called delta x. Now remember that fx delta x approaches the idea of fx dx as we cram more and more rectangles into our region. In other words, as n approaches infinity and what we end up getting is area being the integral from a to b of our function dx. When thinking about area inside of a curve using a polar idea, instead of using rectangles coming off of the horizontal axis, we will use sectors of a circle which are centered at the pole at the origin, in other words, uh, to approximate our area inside this curve. Area for a rectangle was easy, it was just width times height. Area of a sector of a circle is not so bad either, so if we just take what is the formula for the area of one of these sectors here that I have in my curve, well, it's a piece of a circle, right? So we know it's some portion of pi r squared, which is the area of a circle. Well, what is it? Well, it would be out of the entire circle, which is 2 pi. So how much of the 2 pi angle do I have? Well, whatever the width is in terms of an angle, right? In other words, delta theta. Some change in my angle from here to here, that out of 2 pi will be how much of a circle we have. We can reduce this idea. You'll notice that the pi's reduce. And if we simplify that, we'll get 1 half just plain r squared delta theta with no pi. Now the r in our formula here is just going to be the length of that sector. In other words, my function of theta thinking about making this sector as far out as our curve f of theta is. So our r is really going to be f of theta just like our height in rectangular coordinates was f of x. So we have this formula 1 half times our function of theta squared delta theta. We do a similar thing in polar coordinates where we look at adding more and more sectors to get a better and better approximation of the area inside of our curve here. And as we let the number of sectors approach infinity, we get this formula that involves an integral of f of theta squared d theta with our one half out front. And you'll notice our bounds are not from a to b, but from alpha to beta using these Greek letters as we usually do for angles. These will be theta bounds. So how we want to picture using a bunch of sectors inside of our curve to sum up using the integral to form our area inside. First we'll think of our polar curve and think about fitting many, many, more than I can draw, sectors inside of the region coming out from the pole to the curve. And if we fill the region with those sectors, then that will give us the area. Now here, I'm using symmetry. I've only used sectors in the top half of my object. So I could simply take the area that I get from the top half and multiply by two. That would give me the top half and the bottom half area in this example you see here. Here I have another polar curve. We can use this type of symmetry in many different examples. So here imagine filling one petal of this curve with sectors with wedges coming out from the pole to the curve itself. And we could take the area of one petal, multiply by four, and get the actual area inside the entire graph here. Hopefully our video here helps you understand where the formula comes from and how to think about setting up an integral to find the area inside of a polar curve. We have a few example videos after this. Check those out. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.